What is up guys, I'm Fabio and on this channel I help you become a better programmer so subscribe if you're interested. In this video I'm gonna show you how to use dates in Chart.js, specifically how to use dates and time in the x-axis, how to change the units, the display format and also how to filter values to show only those within a certain period. By the way, in the description box down below you can find a link to get the source code of my videos and support the channel. And if you're struggling with programming, check out all the other links to join really cool learning platforms and a lot more in the description box down below as well. Alright, so here we are inside Visual Studio Code. I've got live server running and Pretia, which is the code formatter running as well. I've got two files, the index.html file and the main.css. Okay, so these are the only files that we are going to use in this case. So let's actually zoom out a little bit. Okay, perfect. So let's close this. So this is basically the structure that we're gonna start with. I've got the style sheet here, and this is what's in it. Okay, so nothing fancy. Then I've got a few divs here, and then the canvas with this ID, which is basically where the chart is going to be drawn. Then I've got this script tag here with this link, which is a link to the CDN, for chart.js, basically to import the library. By the way, in this video, I'm not gonna go a lot into how to structure things, how to use options and stuff like that, because I've already made a video where I actually explain how to set up chart.js, etc., etc. So I'll leave the link in the description box down below if you want to know more about it. I highly recommend you go and watch that first so you have a better understanding of how to actually use chart.js. So here, I'm inside the script tag, okay, so I'm going to write the script here. You could have a different file like script.js file and then just sort of link the file here, okay. So here I've got the options. This is just to maintain the aspect ratio of the chart. Then I've got some data, okay. So as you can see, these are just dates and this is the format that I got from a database and here as the Y, I've got some random values, okay? These could be views or whatever. As you can see, I've got the label, just value, that's fine. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. As you can see, this is the whole thing. Let's zoom out a little bit more, like that, okay? So you can see that better, all right? Then here I get the context, which is actually the canvas. And then here I create the new chart, okay? With the data here and then the options here, all right? So this is basically what we've got. So let's actually show what we have. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it like that, perfect. So this is what we've got, okay? As you can see down here, we've got just raw strings with the value that we have here. But we want chart.js to handle those strings as dates, as daytime objects, and we want to be able to actually format them in a certain way, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is here, inside the options, and write something like scales, then x, because we are going to change a few things here, the x-axis, then type time, okay? So we are sort of saying, all the labels here, we want to treat them as time. So let's actually save that and see what we've got. We've got nothing. <laughs> really, really cool, isn't it? But why isn't it working? So let's actually open the developer tools and down here in the console, you can see that this method is not implemented. Check that a complete data adapter is provided. What does that mean? Let's actually go to the website. As you can see here in the chart.js documentation, we've got this. The time scale requires both a date library and a corresponding adapter, etc., etc., etc. So if we go here, like that, as you can see, you've got a list of things that you can use, of libraries that you can use. You can use the one that you prefer, but in this case, I'm just going to use date FNS. Okay. Date FNS is this one here. Okay. This. I'm just already in the CDN page. So first of all, we need to import this library. And we can do that in different ways. If you're using a node project, which we are not, 
you might want to do something like no, uh, npm install etc etc but in this case i'm going to use the cdn which is this one okay as you can see here you need to write the version you could just leave date fns like that without the version but this could lead to breaking changes because let's say that now you've got version 4 and you just write your code for version 4 and then in a few years you open the website and you've got the version 10. Let's say that the code you wrote is not compatible with the version 10. So your website is going to break. So if you write the version here, you're always going to get that specific version until you want to change that. But if you change that manually, basically you are going to make sure that everything works fine. Okay. So in this case, I've got the script tag already here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. Okay. Like this. Let's actually do this so you can see that the whole thing all right so this is basically the complete url perfect then here you need a corresponding adapter okay so the corresponding adapter you get it from here so you click on this and you get to the adapter okay which is what i've got already here and you can install this in the same exact way so you can use uh, npm etc etc but in this case i'm going to use the cdn so i'm going to just copy and paste the one that i already have that let's do this so let's do this like that and then i'm going to paste that so as you can see here i've got the version okay for the same reason so now we've got charger yes the library the date library and then the adapter. Really important, you need to write things in this order, okay? It's really, really important. Otherwise, it's not gonna work as expected. Perfect. So now that we've got the adapter, let's actually see if things change. So let's go back here. I'm gonna save that. As you can see, everything works as expected because now we've got the things that we need. Here, you don't have the row strings anymore. So you don't have those strings anymore here. You've got days, 21st of April, 23rd, etc. And then in the tooltip, you've got that. So you've got the hours, etc., etc. This is really, really cool. And as you can see, you can do this and it changes the number of labels. And another cool thing is that it automatically uses the right unit. So in this case, you've got one value per day. Okay, so it uses the days, but if you had, let's say, what, uh, all the values in the same day, you're not going to use days, of course, it's going to use hours. I actually have a few values and I'm going to replace those like that. Okay, cancel it like that. I'm going to save that. As you can see here, you've got 27th, 27th, etc, etc. So all the values in the same day, as you can see, uses the hours. So 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 p.m., etc. So it sort of uses the right unit depending on the time between each value, basically. But let's say that you had something like this down here. So as you can see, two months later, now you've got one value really, 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 really far away from the others. So it's going to be days here, down here, and not hours anymore. So that's really, really cool. Let's actually go back to one per day, like that. So we're going to go back here. Of course, this is automatic, but you can force things. By the way, just a quick reminder, in the description box down below, you can find a link to get the source code of my videos and also other interesting things like links to join really cool learning platforms to take your skills to the next level. So go and check them out. So you might want to force a specific unit. So I want to use hours. I want to use days, even if the automatic thing gives you hours, but you want days, for example, and things like that. You can force that here. So up here, we are still inside the X. We're going to do something like time. And then this is going to be unit. And here you can write the unit that you want. So you've got hour, for example, if we save that, as you can see now, down here, you've got hours. Even though the automatic unit was day. 
But if you try to do something, you can do something like month, for example, and you get just May, something like that, okay? But if we do something like second, and we save that, you don't get anything. Why? Let's actually open the developer tools. As you can see here, this number and this number are too far apart with step size of one second. What does this mean? Basically, it means that since we have one value per day, if you use the unit second, okay, because you've got a lot of seconds between this and this, and then this and this, etc., etc. So you've got a lot of seconds between all of those values, and second is too little, basically. So you need to be really, really careful with this. And I actually think that if you leave that automatic is the best thing you can do, basically, because you're not gonna run into issues and stuff like that. But you know that you can do that. So I'm just going to comment that out like that. Perfect. So now it works again. And now here, as you can see, you've got this format, right? But maybe you want to format things differently and you can actually do that. So here, still inside the time, so down here, you can do something like display formats like that. And here you can write all the units. So second, minute, hour, day, month, whatever, okay? So in this case, I wanna do something like second, and you can do something like HH, MM, SS, for example. I'm gonna show you where you can find those things here in a second. Okay, that minute, which means when you use the unit minute, just format things like this, okay? In this case, so our, let's, do something like dd, which means day, then y, and then h, h, m, m, and then day. I'm gonna show you in a second what you get, y. So if we save that, since we are using day, as you can see, you've got this here. You can actually do this and get the hours. Of course, since you're using the day, you get a zero, zero, okay? So in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But as you can see, here you still have values like 9, 34, et cetera, et cetera. And if you change the unit like that, and we do something like hour, for example, just the comma like that, as you can see, now it uses this format here, okay? So as you can see, 7 p.m., 11 p.m., etc., etc. Of course, it uses like 24 hours in this case. And as I said, you can find all the codes here. If you go to date FNS, you go here, and then go down, down, like until you get to format like this. And as you can see, it's loading, okay? So as you can see here, you've got all the things that you can do with it. So you've got, for example, hour, minute, second, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here, as you can see up here, you've got the link. And another cool thing actually is that if we go back here and we remove the unit like that, okay, and we actually remove a few values. So let's actually keep those, all right. So you've got those values. Now you have basically this, okay? So this format here. If you expand this, you actually need to zoom out a little bit. As you can see now, it uses this one here. And if you go back like that, it uses day, hour, why? Because here, you've got enough space, so you can use a smaller unit, okay? So you've got enough space, but if you've got less space, basically you don't have enough space for all the labels with the hours, so it uses the day, okay? So another cool advantage of using the automatic unit is that it changes things according to the space that you have, etc., etc. So it's really, really cool. I just wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna go back to this, okay, like that. 
we are actually going to save that perfect here i'm gonna go like that and of course you can also change the tooltip okay so here as you can see you've got this value april 24th 2024 etc etc but you can change the format of the tooltip as well and you can do that down here you can do something like this so tooltip format then dd mm y hour minutes like that if you save that and let's actually remove this just going to comment this out perfect as you can see now you've got this in the tooltip this format here is the same as the one in the tooltip pretty pretty cool right now that we've seen this let's see how to actually create a range so let's say that i want to see the values only from the first of may to the seventh i don't know something like that so if we save that first of all i'm actually going to remove this like that oh that does look a little bit better so down here after the time object so after this one i'm going to do something like min and this is going to be this 0501 and let's see as you can see it starts from the first of may then max 2024 05 and 07 and as you can see it goes from the first to the seventh pretty pretty cool right and you can do that programmatically as well so i'm gonna go down here okay i'm gonna do something like my chart dot options dot scales dot scales dot x dot min and this is going to be let's say 2024 04 uh, 28th okay if you do this it doesn't work but if you do something like my chart update and you do this as you can see 28th so basically it starts out with the mean up here using this option here so the first of may but then programmatically you change it. okay so you might have something like i don't know a calendar or something and when you select a date in the calendar you change the mean for example you click on the date like here you click on it and then you've got the calendar and you click on the 28th for example and you do this okay this thing here then the same thing for the max so you could do something like my chart option scales x max and do the same thing or maybe you could have a button to show the values in a certain month or the last seven days and so on and so forth so you can do a lot of things with it okay so that's really really powerful so i highly recommend you actually experiment with that you play with it and see what you can do and not do you can even do something like new date i don't know something like that okay so just experiment with that and see what you can and cannot do but in this case let's just leave it like that okay all right now click on the video on the screen to keep learning don't forget that you can support the channel and get the source code of my videos using the link down in the description Check out all the other links as well, like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!